This is part five of a video series about content storage and retrieval for automated document templates. The last method I want to talk about for organizing content in a Word template is content controls. Word content controls are containers that can hold a word, a sentence, a paragraph, or an entire section of a document. Like building blocks, they can contain formatted content, pictures, tables, text, whatever. The content control itself only shows up when you click on it, so it's invisible in the final document. Each content control has a title, a tag, and a unique ID number, so the computer can find them and do things with them, like deleting them or changing their contents. Together, these features make them perfect for document automation. Content controls work great when the structure and content of the document is going to be fairly consistent each time. First, we build a master document that contains every possible section and paragraph that might ever need to be included. You can start with an existing document and go through and highlight sections and turn them into content controls and give each one a name. Unlike the other approaches we've looked at, this one has all the text here in one document where it's easy to see and update and edit. This is a master template for building proposals for telecommunication systems, which contains all of the possible specifications that could be included. Each of these numbered paragraphs is contained inside a content control. The person writing the proposal could pull up this template and go down through each page, finding and deleting one by one the paragraphs that aren't needed for this job. But this button here makes that much faster and easier to do. A macro scans through the content controls and turns them into a list of available paragraphs, and then the user can go through and tag which ones to include and which ones not to include. The default is to include every section except the ones I marked to exclude. So I could go through and take out this one, and this one, and these other ones, and then whatever's left would be in my document. Or it could be the other way around. I could start with nothing included in the document and then selectively choose those I want to include. So this one, and this one, and these ones, and these ones down here. Then when I'm done, I click OK, and the paragraphs I did not include are removed from the document and the rest are renumbered automatically. Here's a more complicated example of an engineering specification document. At the top is a list of different components that might be included in the document, and each of these is in fact a content control. If we turn on this design mode, we can see those more easily. Then the rest of the document has different chunks of text, all contained in named content controls keyed to this list. Some of those are paragraphs, while others are only a sentence or two, and there are content controls inside other content controls. There might be several dozen tagged with the name of each component spread out throughout the document. Again, this master document has every possible piece of content that might ever be needed. Then we give the user a checklist and say, uncheck those you don't want to include. The computer goes through and deletes the sections I told it we don't need this time, and all the individual content controls that were tied to those components. And then I can save the finished document. This company does business across multiple states. Each state has different engineering and legal requirements. So the master may contain several different versions of the same paragraph, each customized for one state. We've gone through the master and tagged state-specific language. So now using the toolbar, I can indicate which state this job will be done in. Based on my answer, the computer goes through and takes out any language tagged for another state besides the one I chose. When my document is finalized, before I send it to the client, I can have a button like this that removes all the content controls. What's left is a regular document with no trace of anything else. These two examples use what I call a subtractive approach, starting with all possible content, then subtracting out or removing the pieces we don't need, as opposed to some of the techniques from my earlier videos, which use an additive approach starting with a blank document, then adding in the pieces you want. 
your particular needs will dictate which approach is better for your project. Finally, here is an example of different kinds of content controls used in a letter template. Yellow controls are simple fill-in-the-blank fields that I just type into. The ones in blue are linked content controls using something called XML, where if I enter information into one, all of the other matching controls in the whole document are updated automatically. Pink have specialized automation. For example, I type in a dollar figure and it automatically updates that and spells out the words like on a check. Finally, the green ones are drop-down controls where I can choose from a list. I've added some automation to this one, so after I pick a name, it fills in other related content controls, like the title and phone number of the staff person I chose here. Please watch the other videos in this series to learn about other techniques for content storage and retrieval in Microsoft Office. And be sure to watch my last video about techniques for dealing with graphic content, which I think you'll really enjoy.